Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here on Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today we're discussing a lovely piece launched in 2016. This is the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra GMT Good Planet. Now originally, some of the proceeds from the sales went to the Good Planet Foundation in the name of Maritime Conservation, but since you're the pre-owned buyer, you're interested in the tech and the spec and this watch has got plenty. On my 16 centimeter circumference wrist this is a 43 millimeter grade 5 titanium case that wears light though it is a large watch but the better to see both time zones easily. Across the wrist 51.5 millimeters the watch is actually quite thick at 15 millimeters, but with a domed bezel it'll slide easily underneath a jacket cuff, if not the tightest of dress sleeves. The spacing between the lugs is 21 millimeters, so it has a nice broad stance for a 43. It appears properly planted on the wrist. And in titanium, I need to emphasize, though it's a big watch, it wears very light, feeling more like a 40 millimeter steel watch. The timepiece has a lovely and thickly bolstered strap that's a combination of textile externally, there's plenty of stuffing, that's the bolstering, with a contrasting white stitch, there's calfskin on the underside with a contrasting blue stitch. There are rubber gussets for the perforations for the pin buckle, this ensuring that the strap won't age prematurely and get gouged. A clever and thoughtful refinement. The clasp is a good looking piece, a long time Omega accessory. This one's in titanium, double finished with polish and satin, twin trigger release. The twin triggers ensure that this one can't pop open accidentally. Internally, a minderless system. A minderless system, for those who are seeing this for the first time, allows you to tuck the excess length into the clasp, buckle it down, size it, and then there's no excess length visible externally, nor are there any strap minder loops, hence the term minderless system. The case itself is very fresh on this one, so the definition, the polish and the satin is easy to see, and the sharp break between the flanks of the case, which are sheer, and the lugs, which are beveled, is evident and quite well defined at all four corners. This is a case shape that's been around since the Speedmasters and Seamasters of at least the mid 60s, so it's a well-worn design that stood the test of time. Pre-2017, you can see there's a little bit more shouldering and shear guard for the crown, and the crown is cylindrical rather than conical on the newer watches. Remember, this is a 2016 model. The dial is exquisite. It's actually a white lacquer. This watch was made before ceramic proliferated across all the Seamaster models, so it has a lovely glossy gleam. It looks almost like wet paint. All of the indices are applied, and a lovely blue, a metallic blue that matches the applique Omega logo and marquee, as well as the hands at center. A few splashes of red, including the metallic applied GMT lettering, as well as the hand of the 24-hour indicator that makes one sweep of the dial per day, settable independently from the local hour hand, and the watch with two setting modes. The first is stop seconds, so you can stop the seconds and synchronize the watch precisely to a reference time. And then there's an intermediate position where you can actually jump the hour hand independently. Seconds, minutes, second time zone, not affected. But you can see how I can actually change my local hour and even jump the date forward and backwards as I travel. you also appreciate the fact that the screw down crown and the screwed in case back endow the watch with 150 meters of water resistance. The Aquaterra, always the surf turf Seamaster, not a hardcore diver. It doesn't have a rotating bezel, but it is a highly water-resistant watch that could also be your dress watch. Turn it all over and you have the Master coaxial, caliber 8605, automatic winding, twin mainspring barrels, 60 hour power reserve, it's a bi-directional winder, so there's no unidirectional rotor wobble. The twin barrels ensure that after 24 or even 48 hours, there isn't a drop off in amplitude, that's one of the advantages of a twin barrel system versus a single barrel. It's robust, as you can see, a full balance bridge with a free sprung index, so you have shock resistance, and then you have a silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism in the watch, as you can see, anti-magnetic to over 15,000 gauss. And I'll also mention that the watch is effectively amagnetic in practice. You can see the shuriken-like coaxial escapement system just under its bridge, which is in turn under my finger. So you can actually see and appreciate the coaxial. It's a tangential contact system with a very minimal lift angle and very minimal parasitic friction, increasing the precision of the watch, reducing the wear, and also extending the maintenance intervals. Invented by the late George Daniels, a British independent watchmaker in 1974. It was industrialized by Omega 20 years ago this year in 1999. And today it has the durability and the precision to realize all of the potential of 
the original Daniels system. Of course, you can see across the bridges, Cote de Genève and Spiral Arabesque and a combination of black polished and black oxidized screws for a unique aesthetic. And you can see that although it's machine executed, there's also handsome beveling of the bridges lighting up as well as an engine turned perlage of the base plate. All in all, a good looking watch and a good looking movement and a very versatile one. A 43 that's friendly for smaller wrists. You can see this one and make it yours on the watch box. Omega Seamaster Aquaterra GMT Good Planet by Night. Note the GMT hand and the seconds hand are both loomed.